It's the year 1988. My neighbor Totoro, Beetlejuice, Heathers, and Akira were out in theaters. Faith by George Michael and what would later become known as Rick Rolling were at the top of the charts. Hairspray cans were being sold in droves and kids and teens everywhere were playing Super Mario Bros. 2 on the NES. Back at the Sanrio offices, they would be releasing one of the most prominent characters since Tuxedo Sam and My Melody. We're going to take a deep dive into one of our most favorite frog characters, Kuropi. This is Kuropi, or Karo Karo Kuropi in Japan, aka Kuropi Hasunoe. Yes, he has a lot of names. Karo is a Japanese onomatopoeia for the noise a frog makes, and Hasuone means on a lily pad. His design came about a year before Kuropi's debut, where a contest was held during the rainy season to vote on possible designs for a new frog character. The design that would eventually become Kuropi ended up winning. He stars in the titular show Kuropi and Friends, released in Japan in 1989, which was broadcast in Japan, Korea, and Canada. I couldn't find information on Kuropi and Friends other than there are apparently 10 25 minute long episodes, and I could only find a few English dubbed episodes. I also found that Kuropi's English voice is voiced by Jill Frapier, who also voices Luna from Sailor Moon. Kuropi lives with his family at his house on the edge of Donut Pond. Let's talk about them. Piki, or Kevin, in the dubbed is Kuropi's triplet sister and helps out at their mother's restaurant. Kuropi, or Curtis, in the dubbed, is the youngest of the triplets. Everyone mixes them up with Kuropi and you can see why. Kuropa is Kuropi's father and a doctor. Kuroma is Kuropi's mother, owner of a restaurant, and Chipi, or Kuropi's little cousin, who loves strawberries. As for Kuropi's friends, we have Caroline, who is Kuropi's girlfriend, Ganta, or Junk, Kuropi's biggest sized friend, who can transform himself into a rock, but he's not without his weaknesses, as he's scared of heights and the dark, Kyorosuke, or Sok, who is so tall he can see things over half a mile away. Nobirun, or Newton, who is a deep thinker and loves doing experiments, and as every 80s nerd, he's not very athletic. Kerope, who does not live in the donut pond originally and is the target of many practical jokes. Denden, Den, who is a snail and one of my personal favorites. And Teru Teru, or Ruby, my other personal favorite, who is a sunshine doll and can predict the weather. She is named after a Teru Teru Bozu, which literally translates into Shine Shine Monk. That is, a small traditional handmade doll made from white paper or cloth that Japanese farmers began hanging outside of their window by a string. This talisman is supposed to have magical powers to bring good weather and to stop or prevent a rainy day. It's a shame they renamed her Ruby, considering the context of her name. Side note, in most of the merchandising, it's really popular to see Kuropi with Denden Den and Teru Teru. In the show, there's one villain that I thought I'd take a note of. This guy is Avalon. He appears in the episode The Adventures of the Coward Prince. He's described as an ancient and evil being that temporarily conquered the kingdom alongside his minions by having everyone but Prince Eren turned into stone. This all happens in a movie, but Kuropi being transported by a lightning bolt into said movie and having to face this guy is horrifying. I mean, look at him. Kuropi also appeared in his own video games, including Kuropi's Big Adventure, published by Charactersoft and released in 1991 for the NES. Big Adventure is a puzzle game where Kuropi must rescue his girlfriend, Caroline, who is locked up in a castle. To do so, he must solve the action-based puzzles in seven different themed worlds with four different types of stages. Kuropi's Big Adventure, Donuts Ike Wa Osawagi, or Trouble in Donut Pond, it was again published by Charactersoft and released in 1993 for the NES. This game is described as a Super Mario Bros. clone in which Kuropi has to save all of his friends from Donut Pond who have been kidnapped by monsters. Once you beat the game, the narration concludes by saying Donut Pond is safe thanks to Kuropi as he walks off into the sunset. Lastly, we have Kuropi's Adventure Diary, Sleeping Forest of Caroline, a role-playing game released for the SNES in 1994. Published by Charactersoft, this game is more like a sleeping beauty story with Caroline being kidnapped in the woods by the most unsanrial looking dragon I've seen during a picnic and it's up to Kuropi to save her. This one doesn't have a fan translation, as you can see. What I will say about it though is that even though it has a uniqueness in being an RPG Sanrio game, I think the characters look so washed out, more so than other games, especially Kurobi. 
I think the lack of a black outline, or any outline for that matter, or maybe it's the color palette. Barry's Kuropi merch has spawned since his inception, but with the recent boom in Sanrio popularity, it seems like the characters Kuromi and My Melody have been taking the spotlight. Although he has been more popular with the artsy and recent frog lovers crowd, even with the resurgence of Sanrio appreciators, Sanrio closed most of their US shops in the late 2010s, only leaving stores open in California. Speaking of which, let's go back a few years to a lesser known Sanrio character. This is Button Nose. Hey, little Button Nose, everybody knows you are the ruler of this fairy land, a fairy land where everything's so sweet. Hey, little Button Nose, everybody knows the way it seems. She was created in 1978, and her original design was created by Masayo Hirose. Button Nose's real name is Trish, but take a guess on why they call her Button Nose instead. Her birthday is January 5th, and she is a sweet and lively girl who makes strawberry jam and likes cookies. In 1983, Sanrio built the Strawberry House in Tokyo. It was based on the fictional home of Button Nose, and it was originally supposed to be a limited time type of deal, but it was so popular that it remained open until 2011, which is a crazy long time for this relatively unused Sanrio character. Button Nose also stars in her own anime series. This was Sanrio's first plunge into producing an anime series for one of their mascots. The series Button Nose takes place in a fairy tale and sci-fi setting where she turns out to be descendant from royalty. Other than having a really infectious opening song, trust me, if you listen to it long enough like I have, it'll stick with you. The series ran for 26 episodes from 1985 to 1986. It was also animated by Pacific Animation Corporation, which would eventually become Walt Disney Animation Japan, an animation production subsidiary of Disney Television Animation. Under the Pacific Animation name, they also animated Thundercats in the same year. Later, an English dub was produced by Saban in 1994. The show stars our titular character, Button Nose, who is the only daughter of a strawberry farmer on Earth. She was supposed to give strawberries to Tic Tac Bon, or Rudy in the English dub, a servant robot made by the King of Hookland, who, upon landing on Earth, goes to Button Nose's room for a basket full of them. Due to her curiosity, she ends up on Tic Tac Bon's ship, activating it, and going to Hookland of the planet Kalint. I love the ship's design. It's shaped like a music note with the heart windshield. After failing to control the ship, we are introduced to Clip or Scooter in the dub. He is depicted in the intro as riding a motorcycle and manages to catch up to the ship to help Button Nose control it and successfully lands it. After this incident, Button Nose is turned into the king in handcuffs. More about the king, Duke Fastener, Duke being his title, but he's actually the king of Hookland and uncle of Button Nose. His name is Uncle Crumpet in the English dub, and his Wikipedia bio states that he always had a fascination for space and asks Button Nose to act in his place while he goes on a space trip. In the only episode in the English dub, and maybe even the original Japanese one, Duke takes off in the ship and leaves Button Nose a note saying that there are many fascinating things in the universe and he intends to see them, appointing Button Nose as temporary king. In the second episode, we are introduced to Prince Flower, Percy in the dub, Duke Fastener's only son. He loves to read, and his knowledge often helps Button Nose. Button Nose, Prince Flower, and Clip are usually on some wacky adventure in this series. The other characters we are introduced to are the Von Goli brothers, Benny and Bernie, in the dub, Bianco the oldest, and Rosso being the youngest. Rosso is also kind of Bianco's lackey. And then we have Mrs. Bracelet. She's a Countess of Hookland, and her name is Countess Upstuck in the dub. She has ambitions to take the throne by having her daughter, Pierce, marry Prince Flower. She is so chic. I also love her design and Pierce's. And speaking of which, Pierce does not like button nose. She's first seen holding her cat, Soil, in her arms. This is Chamberlain, or Malcolm in the dub. He's a childhood friend of Duke Fastener and Clip's mom, Martha. Last but not least, we have Franklin, Button Nose's pet aardvark. 
in the English dub, his name is Howie the House Mouse, and not sure why it would be confusing to have him portrayed as an aardvark in the English dub since we already had a popular aardvark show. But then again, they probably thought we couldn't handle an animal like an aardvark, like we couldn't handle onigiri. Pika, pika. These donuts are great! Jelly filled are my favorite! Nothing beats a jelly filled donut! I think if Sanrio were to ever have a reboot of any past series, Button Nose would be so fun to explore as it has a good foundation and a whole cast of characters that live in a kingdom of Hookland. Unfortunately, the only uploaded episodes are an Arabic dub of the show, which is why I had such a hard time finding out who's who and what was happening, but it's kind of amazing that all 26 episodes are there on YouTube. Since there is an English dub by Saban, and it looks like it ran on Fox Kids, I'm surprised that the show isn't available in, in the English dub in its entirety. There is one episode that was uploaded in English, episode 3, by Pinky Lop Bun's episode archive, and it was supposedly taken from the Russian dub and paired with the audio from a studio tape uploaded by Steve Barden. To learn more and read the description on how this episode came about, you can find the link in the description below. That does it for today's video. If you watched the whole thing, thank you for sticking around. See you next time.